Magic word of the day, Nonbo. Definition, an interaction between two or more cards that is disadvantageous instead of profitable. Example, playing exploration and land tax turn one on the play. Check out this retarded play. Land tax and exploration, fun. This has been Magic Word of the Day. Welcome back, cloners, to yet another game of Commander. I know it looks like we're playing 2HG, but we're not. Ronnie is going first this game on the bottom left of your screen, playing his signature deck, Hizay's on Tamar. Josh is once again playing his unmodded Murath Will of the Wild deck. Chris is next, playing one of his two signature decks, Toshiro Umazawa. And I'm on the bottom right, still trying out my new Mimeoplasm deck. Oh, the Mimeoplasm deck. He's not just any Mimeoplasm. A little while ago, you guys pointed out that we are still using the Partial Paris Mulligan rules. Yeah, we still are. These games are recorded months in advance. Makes it awkward for stuff like that. Opening hands. Turn one. Ronnie claims to have a very awkward opening hand. He starts by casting Exploration, and then Land Tax, which is sort of a nonbo. Next turn, Ronnie plays two more lands and casts Ranger's Path for a possible turn three his Zazon. On my turn two, I thankfully get green mana and play an awkward turn two Elvish Mystic. Ronnie has to settle for a turn four his Zazon when he plays Crosian Burge tapped for his seventh mana and then casts Aura Shards. Josh is the first to cast his commander, Marath. Chris casts Read the Bones, Scrying, Drawing, Losing Life. That card does it all. I think Chris's rule is that he doesn't cast Toshiro until the late game. Somber World Sage from me and Enlightened Tutor from Ronnie at the end of my turn for Perforos, who is nuts in his Zazon. Ronnie casts Perforos, God of the Forge, and also leaves up mana for Crojan Verge. Josh casts Maiel, the Anima, and attacks Ronnie for three since he is about to deal us all a bunch of damage. Chris casts Toshiro. I was wrong. I cast a main phase Grizzly Salvage and get Eternal Witness. I wanted a second black mana, but Chris's Urborg to my Yagmoth is providing me that. I then cast Eternal Witness with my Sage and return the Salvage to my hand for some more graveyard fun. Ronnie casts his on Tamar, dealing Josh, Chris, and myself two damage from Perf Furos, but there is nothing for Ronnie to blow up with Aura Shards. Josh and Chris both don't have an answer to Perf Furos, so I guess it's up to me. I start by casting Grizzly Salvage at the end of Chris's turn. I then Mulch and get three lands. I cast Animate Dead to get back my Woodfall Primus to blow up Ronnie's Aura Shards so he doesn't shoot my Animate Dead next turn when all his guys come in. On Ronnie's turn 6, the rest of us take 16 damage when 8 Sand Warriors come into play. Josh casts Fires of Yavimaya on his turn, and Chris shoots his Azon with Eyes Blight ending, which also has the added benefit of exiling the Sand Warriors, but it also allows Ronnie to recast his Azon. Chris casts Cabal Ritual for just one more mana, and then casts Sepulchral Primordial, taking my Shield Red Whispering One and the Eternal Dragon, Josh Plane Cycled. On my upkeep, I sack Woodfall Primus, who persists to take out Ronnie's Sylvan Library. I then cast Vornclex, Voice of Not Untapping Lands, and then attack Ronnie for two with the Witness. Turn six, Ronnie finds his ninth land and recasts his Azon for another round of Perforos Beats. We each take two damage. Josh sacks one of his Marathlings on his upkeep to Shieldred. Josh has no play, and Chris wastelands Ronnie's Black Border Taiga, so we take two damage less from his Azon, and Chris doesn't lose next turn. Chris then shoots his Azon and attacks Ronnie all out, dealing him 18 damage. I then attack Ronnie and put him to 1. I then cast a Blood Gift Demon and pass. Ronnie triggers so many things on his upkeep, and we take 16 damage. Josh and I are at 4, Ronnie 1, and Chris 2. Interesting game we have here. On his turn, Josh sees if he can win the game this turn, because he knows if he lets anyone else untap, he won't. 
He doesn't have enough mana to really cast Marath and use it to shoot and kill everyone. So instead, Josh activates My Yell and gets Rampaging Baloths. He then plays the land and gets a 4-4 Hasty Beast. So Josh can kill one or two of us pretty easily, but not all of us. Whoever he leaves alive will definitely kill him next turn, so we are all in tough spots here. Josh thinks for quite a while to see if he has the win, then he finds out he does as long as no one does anything in response when he casts Savage Twister for one, clearing the board of all of Ronnie's blockers. Josh then attacks everyone with enough damage to kill everyone when Chris casts Darkness. That just happened. Josh was planning that turn for like 5 minutes when Chris cast it too. Chris then has enough damage to kill us all on his turn, and I can't block Shieldred because of Swamp Walk. That's the game. Turn 6 win for Toshiro. Ronnie definitely set the pace that game. He completely understood that it was everyone versus him the second he had that much mana with the Perforos. Chris's Sepulchral Primordial was pretty good against my deck, as putting big creatures in my yard is what my deck does best. The last turn of the game was the most interesting last turn of a game in maybe any gameplay we've had up until this point. No one other than Ronnie really got attacked that game, but yet we still had 4 life or less because that's what Hazazan can do. That's the ultimate in diplomacy right there, don't single people out, just kill them all at the same time. That's it for now, hope you enjoyed. This is going at uh, Tristan, and yeah. this is going to go around. Yeah, and I'm going to block him in darkness. But you're going to plus two. <laughs> <laughs> this whole time, he's thinking so hard, and thinks he's doing so good. And he's like, Josh can't win. Hey, I can win. My turn? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs>